three minute teaser has called such a big furor. I, do, I, I can't imagine what the movie is going to do. People, no, no, people put point fingers and ask me, oh, you went to Ram Mandir? I said, yeah. In Haryana, they say Ram Ram, Ram hai, bhai. So, Ram is a big, not just a religious, but, but a cultural icon for us. Mm. I, I really feel that, that politics is a damn serious career in mm. itself. And I have still have a lot of cinema in me. I still have, and now that I'm newly turned director, I want to make a lot of movies. And I've got many acting parts that are awaiting me uh, with abated breath. I am awaiting, awaiting them. So I cannot do two things at the same time. This is not the right time for me. A lot of people advise me not to do it. So you're, a, you're, you're an artist in the truest sense, and this is going to, this is going to, you know, put you in a, in a, in a, in a bracket will make you affiliated to a party and all these things. And I said, damn, I said, no matter what happens, I, I have to do this. And then there, there was not really any script. So, and I had lost a lot of weight. And uh, it was going the path of Saragiri for me all over again. I, in my opinion, the most unifying definition of a political struggle ideology, mm -hmm. more than Gandhiji's in that, for that matter. So all these myths that you're saying that he was a divisive figure, no. In fact, Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Savarkar were both of opposing ideologies. One was non-violence, one was violence. Violent. In the end, they both wanted the same thing, Akhand Bharat. The movie, I thought, this is, this is it. I'm not going to work in cinema after this. Really? Yeah, because I went through such a tough process of two years of, you know, putting my heart, soul and money into it. Hello everybody, I'm Rudrani and welcome to Zoom Speak Easy. My guest today is an actor who's been a lone soldier for a while. In an industry when you're not from here, you always have to fight some battles alone. He's fought for the film that we're here today with for a really long time and pretty much alone. So it's very interesting to hear the story from the horse's mouth. For someone who loves horses, the pun is intended. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I know, I'm trying. I'm, I, I met you after a long time. <coughs> yes. I don't want you to think I've lost my touch. No, you haven't at all. <laughs> but it's great. In the, in the opening, you've been a lone soldier, literally, in, uh, in, this, in the sea of artists in Bollywood. Um, and you've stuck to your guts and to your specific lane that you have created. It's pretty difficult to do that. So, uh, how have you done it? Uh... I don't know, really, by resilience and not giving into the whole wild chase of just making money and being seen and this and that and just went about more about chasing my art form with various things and sometimes you it works out, sometimes it doesn't work out. Mm. I think um, success is just, in my case especially, is just going from failure to failure without losing the enthusiasm. Mm. So it has been that road and uh, somewhere now I think uh, I am gelling more with, with, with the larger industry than ever before, I think. But at time time, when you want to do certain good work, also, you want to be there to have a certain audience so that you can push those good content films. And it doesn't happen because you might not have too many people standing out there handing that out to you. And you're not in the right rooms because you're not really from here. So, how did you deal with insecurities at that time? It was very difficult, but it's for people who are trying to break in even today to, to have the kind of path that you are choosing. It's difficult. Well, it, it is difficult and no doubt, but uh, I was also very lucky mm. in lots of ways. When I got an audition from a monsoon wedding, where I met with my friend Nasir, when I came to Bombay, I told someone in Italy, when I was at the Venice Film Festival, a producer was there, America ke, mm. hum dono saath ne the, logon ko dekh rahe the, naachte huye. To unne bola, you were, were the only one in the movie was not acting. And I, my whole, whole being was shaken. Today I will take it as a compliment. Mm. But at that time, and I didn't really tell anybody about it. And uh, uske baad, uh, went to Nasir bhai and, 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 you know, tried to 
convince him and he was very helping to me to be a part of his troupe and his workshops and all those things. After that, from there, I was uh, chosen by Ram Gopal Varma to work in the factory films and I was put on a, I was put on a, a monthly income of 35,000 rupees. So I was lucky in that sense that there was something about me or maybe I was in the right place at the right time that I did get that break. Mm. But then, after that, you have a picture. After that, what will you do? I was lost. Mm. I said, I will not do this picture. De kar li, main aisi picture hi so I turned down movies which went on to become hits. Mm. But they were very similar. And that zid of mine kept me away from a, a lot of work and, and, and mainstream acknowledgements and all that. And But the good thing that happened with that, that I, I did not get success quickly. So I kept learning, I kept mm. learning. I kept improving with every picture, with every one. And there have been many misses and they've been, they've been very heartbreaking. And then I have not, I'm not the person who's got a lot of acknowledgement in mm. terms of uh, uh, the, the industry itself. The audience acknowledgement and love has always been there. Nobody has really pointed fingers at me that I don't know my job or whatever it is. But then one has to keep in mind that, hey, what you get is uh, probably what your, the way you are, that's what you're getting, mm. right? So either you change that or you learn to live without it. So I learned to live without any of those accolades and awards and all those things and I'm fine with it. But the journey is hard, no doubt. And um, I would advise younger actors that it's if you're just in it for, for glamour or for, for you know, just uh, uh, all many, many things that you can, you want to be a part of the film industry, being famous, your college mates knowing about you, your schoolmates knowing about you, uh, that is not enough. You have to have a bigger drive and that's what takes you, probably. Validation. What I was saying was actually sounding like what Mr. Savarkar's life was, really. <laughs> he also didn't get much recognition. Yeah. Uh. And, and validation. I know you didn't yeah. look for it. But it's good that industry people validate some things that you said that you didn't get. It's like that. The phone comes and publicly no one says. But they also don't... Aisa nahi, a phone aake bhi, it's not like you're getting that kind of offers that you'd like to do, right? Like it should translate, that never, that doesn't happen yeah, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't translate into work, right? Like, no, it doesn't. I, I want to know, were there moments that you almost gave up? Because I think we always remember them because you don't and then you continue. Like, Many like times. Was, when was the time when you... Many times. In, during this move, uh, movie, I thought this is, this is it. I'm not going to work in cinema after this. Really? Yeah. Because I went through such a tough process of two years of you know, putting my heart, soul and money into it and it was just a, like, it was like Mr. Savarkar's life. It was tough. I used to always say and still say that I've been in Kalapani for two years and me and Savarkar are going to be released from this, this, uh, you know, unrecognized sacrifice of a life uh, when this movie comes out in front of people. <laughs> and because you brought it here, you have written, acted, directed, pretty much things that it takes a team, you yeah. decided to take it on because of the numerous unfortunate controversies that were associated with the film from the time of conception. Yeah. And, but you had to tell this story and tell it But I want to know why did it happen for you to ultimately reach a point saying, you know what, I'll do everything I was cast as an actor and um, my first instinct was that, hey, I don't look like Mr. Savarkar. Yeah. How will we manage that? Then I said, okay, let's, we'll think, while thinking about it, I started reading about him in various things. First, I started reading books on independence and there was just one paragraph in whole books about independence struggle which would say this was the armed struggle and these, these people were there. They tried lots of things, nothing worked out. I was like, really? Then I read more and then I read, read Savarkar read about Savarkar and read Savarkar and I said, damn, this... And it infuriated me that why is this not a part of our uh, general education? Why is it not part of a public discourse? Why is it that taking his name or even doing his role, because a lot of people advise me not to do it. I said, you're, a, you're, you're an artist in the truest sense and this is going to 
is, is going to, you know, uh, put you in a in a in a in a bracket, mm. will make you affiliated to a party, and all these things. And I said, damn! I said, no matter what happens, I I, I have to do this. And then there there was not really any script, so and I had lost a lot of weight, and uh, it was going the path of Saragiri for me all over again. What happened? I I. I became a sick for three years, and ultimately, someone ended up doing that movie rather quickly. Mm. So I said, "No, this cannot happen to me again." And then I co-wrote it with Utkarsh Nathani, and so cir circumstances happened that I was, I had the baton, gave was given the baton to direct it as well. Mm. And then I decided that no matter what obstacles I'm going to face, and they are what struggle I'm going to face, I'm going to bring it to its fruition, I'm going to bring this story to the people. It was a kind of a madness and, uh, and foolhardiness with jats ke hota hai, thaan li to thaan li. So I decided that and, and I did it. And now that I look back and all the misery and tough times that I've gone through physically, mentally, financially for this movie, they are nothing in compared to what Mr. Savarkar went through his, his life. Nothing. So, if you're going to play a part and give your all to it, that's it. Was it difficult to get a director here that you wanted in the beginning before you stepped in? Was that also an issue because you, like you see, said, all, and the casting? See, see, many, many, many things conspired mm. during the making of this movie. And I don't want to get into it. Mm. I have put it behind me. It's behind me. That was a tough part and I'm just looking forward to it. Whatever happened has happened. That's history. Nobody's going to... That's one kind of history. Mm. History is... Actually, funny thing about history is it depends on who's telling it. In dispensation, like the political dispensation post-independence uh, was of a certain kind. And that's why history was written only for the... They are the ones who got us the independence. These mm. three, four people are the greatest people in the world. And everybody else was brushed under the carpet. So I want to start a movement with this movie. I don't want this movie to be just a success. I want to start a movement with this movie that other untold stories of our past, our history, our long, lengthy, rich, full of stories history should come out more in people and not be dependent on just one kind of people or one category of people telling or retelling that story. Let us bring out more. And because you are so passionate about it, I think you're the right person to probably <coughs> have even a discussion about what happened or why he is visualized as the person. Person He is visualized by a lot of people, right? I think most of those people don't know anything about him. Okay. They have heard words like mafi veer, pension, coward, this, that. That's all hogwash. I don't think, I, w I was a history student, I didn't know much about him, so I don't know where people are reading about him. <laughs> because he's, it's, it's not there in our public discourse mm. or public education. If a movie can Oppenheimer can be made, why not on him? So which also says that you agree that he is a, a figure of, um, you know, a debate, constant uh, and controversies, right? Which is... He has been admired in them, yes. I think his personal ideologies have also often come up as problematic sometimes. You know, saying that it is not secular enough. When we, and as a nation, we were looking at that. He said that he was an extremist right-wing person who had the ideology that while we want to make it a Hindu Rashtra, you know, we will seclude the others. And he believed in the two-nation theory and all of that, right? Certain Muslim leaders that felt that there are two nations, the ruler Muslims and the ruled Hindus. Right, that uh, when the English came, when the Britishers came, it was a sultanate. When they leave, it should be a sultanate. Mm. Right, that was a very definitive theory. Yeah. And but that was not a very popular dispensation or a popular thought process of people. Hindu and Muslims were quite together, although there were riots in Maharashtra and stuff quite frequently at that time. But it was more or less that uh, that the, all, the nation was together in that whole process. Savarkar at that point of time was out of Kalapani and was in uh, prison in mainland India. That's where he wrote this thing which you are now calling polarizing, mm. Hindutva. Hindutva was a geographical, political and cultural, civilizational, political ideology mm -hmm. to fight for independence. Sure. Right? 
in that, now how do you understand Hindutva? So he said, uh, people between Indus River and the uh, and Bay of Bengal, whoever live here and feel that this is a land of their ancestors, mm -hmm. this is a land of their culture, where your 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 food, your your clothes, your festivals mm -hmm. are all shared, you are a Hindu. Mm -hmm. No matter what religion, what caste, or what community you belong to, right? But because of the pan-Islamic invasion at that time, now you cannot judge a person from today's prism. It has to be that time. Sure. So at that time, he put in this last clause, which was it will have to be the land of your faith as well. So that's why he said, whoever loves their country above their religion is a Hindu, no matter what, where they came from, right? Or, or sorry, what religion they are. Sure. So that was his dispensation. And this was, in my opinion, the most unifying definition of a political struggle ideology, mm. more than Gandhiji's in that, for that matter. So all these myths that you're saying that he was a divisive figure, no. In fact, Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Savarkar were both of opposing ideologies. One was non-violence, one was violence. violence. In the end, they both wanted the same thing, Akhanda Bharat. And ironically, the man of non-violence died of a bullet mm. and the man of violence fasted unto death. He took a samadhi in the end. Amaran Anshan bhot logo ne kiye, Mara koi nahi siwai Mr. Savar karke. You feel like without context is what has destroyed what the true intention of the... Are you trying to say yes, that Yes, yes. Because we are not seeing the circumstances which make a person what mm. he is. We are living in today's circumstances. There is social media, there is wokeness, there is this, there is that. So our ideology, our thought process and actions are guided by our circumstances. Yeah. You should know the circumstances in which that person's, even Gandhiji's for that matter. And through this whole thing, I had different opinions about Gandhiji. But in this process of, of learning about Mr. Savarkar and comparing him to Mr. Gandhi, I have learned to admire Mr. Gandhi more, much more than I did earlier. Hmm. Because I know, because his, what he said and what he did did not have no difference. He lived the life that he preached and he did not deter from it, even for a second. He was a great man in that respect, but a violent revolution would have gotten us our freedom earlier because there were only a handful of British. Mm. If we all got together and even beat them with sticks, they would have disappeared, but we didn't. People are and they have been having so many opinions since even your teaser has dropped in. There are social media opinions. Three-minute teaser has called such a big furor. I, I, I can't imagine what the movie is going to do. <laughs> but You've read a few of the... Let's talk about some of the polarizing comments yes, that you please. already know. Yes, I, I love to... The fact that, you know, we live in today's time when, um, you know, we are questioning about uh, minorities not being treated well or, you know, certain sectors feeling alienated and, uh, in, and div divisive theories being created um, through religion. You know, when they raise questions like that, what, you, what would your answer be? And to the people who say that this is politically mo motivated and... What is politically motivated? Like it, is, it, is, <laughs> it is an agenda, it is anti-propaganda. I've said it before, I'm saying it again. Yeah. There's been a propaganda going on in his name mm. for so long. And kuch to logo, logo ka hai na, kuch to log mm. So, it would have been a propaganda film right from the beginning. I was told not to do it because it will be seen as that. But I was going to release it in the la at la uh, last Independence Day. Correct. And then on, on, on 26 January, because there were big days for the thing, but I just did not, uh, it did not work out. Mm. So now it's coming at this time and I'm glad because there are, happen there are conversations happening. And about this whole thing of, is this the time, blah, 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 blah. Look. Whenever there is elections in any democracy, there is a lot of mudslinging happens. Mm. There is environment created for one set of people to lose power, to get another set of people to gain power. Mm. That is democracy, right? In that, you can make an issue. You, can, you always are always making selective issues, right? The opposition makes selective issues about the government. The government makes selective issues about the opposition. That's democracy. Right? It's up to every individual to see enough, to read enough or to be informed enough to see which way they want to vote. It's mm -hmm. as simple. If you don't like something, vote them out. It's interesting you're talking about voting because apparently you're also contesting for elections is what we hear. Look, 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 look. I, I really feel that, that politics is a 
damn serious career in mm. itself. And I have still have a lot of cinema in me. I still have, and now that I'm newly turned director, I want to make a lot of movies. And I've got many acting parts that are awaiting me uh, with a bated breath. I am awaiting, awaiting them. So I cannot do two things at the same time. This is not the right time for me. Am I inclined towards it? Yes, I'm very informed. And if you want to make a decision, if you want to make a change, you've got to be the change, sure. right? But right now, I've got a lot of cinema left in me. And I am as sincere as I am towards whatever I do. It's not possible for me to do tokenism in, in politics or in movies. I am just unable to do things half-hearted. Mm. Hence, I, it will have to wait. So... Not yet, but in the future maybe is the situation. Yeah, of course. Who knows? Do you know about the future? I don't. <laughs> I don't. But it's at least you're honest enough to say that, you know, that I might do it. You know, a lot of people are just like, till the last day when they want to do it, then they admit. Otherwise, they're like, oh, I'm not a political person. I can't do this. I like that. At least you're being honest about yeah, it. Saying I, that, you know, I, why I, not? Look, I, I, like, I like doing things for the country. I have. I'm from cleaning beaches to, you know, to looking, doing other things for the environment, yeah. to working with Khalsaid, to this, to that. I have been a person uh, of that dispens of that kind of thought process of doing m for the people, for, for, for other people and for things, for, for things that don't, don't have a voice. I've always been that person sure. and I continue, I will continue to be that person. Whether my platform ch changes into a political one or not, that will, time will tell. It's not in my control. Destiny has a part to play. Are there films that you've regretted not doing or films that you have regretted doing? And what have you learned from the ones that you have? Again, they're all bygones, man. It, uh, it, is, it is beyond, it has gone, it's behind me. I'm more interested in the films that I will not be doing in the future. <laughs> Tell us the kind of films that you will not be doing in the future. No, no, I, I just have, uh, I, I just have run, I, I have done movies for other purposes than just art. And money, right? Oh, yeah, of course. I have done that in the past, but more and more I am now inclined, I just cannot go to the set unless I'm totally consumed by it. And it is just becoming more and more impossible. I cannot even do a favor anymore. Because it's, I just, I, I have gone, I, I have gone beyond that, and and I would rather not work than be on a set, you know, in, in doing something which I don't really, f that fully doesn't really consume me. Because our category, up to obviously it's better with OTT and the realization that actors are just actors, but they just used to classify you say lead actor, second lead, and they whatever. still do. You think that is still of course as bad? Of course, of course, it takes a lot. Uh, uh, um, it's it's there everywhere. It's there in the West as well. Yeah. It's there in the West. It's a it is the personal ego of the actor that comes into play at the end of the day. If you just acting, then you can do it on TV, in the theatre, you can do it anywhere. You can do it in a small role, you can do it in a big role. Bhi kar sakte ho. But then every actor at some point or the other thinks about his career and so do I. I'm not above it. But we have to see, in my case or anybody's case, you have to choose the best out of what you get. The reason I ask you this is you've not been afraid in that direction to be categorized into the villain category or the second lead because you thought they were interesting dark characters. But there were heroes and you were in that world of it to know that I don't want to be looked at that because that's, I'm not going to be the center of attention. Which has never been an ego battle for you. I want to know how you translate to that, you know, even when you it is work usually with people not, like Salman not, or it is, it is usually not the role, but how you positioned in the marketing campaign mm. that defines your status. It is not the role really. And that is where there is a clear demarcation from all ends and sometimes forced by people. And that is there. So what do you want to do about it? Want to stop working? No. Find a way out of it. This and now, because of the social media, it's become more democratic. Mm. Otherwise, only BT and this one and that one had the power to make somebody a star and or not a star, but now that's become a democratic process. And then, you know, everybody's got teams and teams of bots and this and that, and everybody's everybody's a star on social media. <laughs> Have you been advised to be like treat yourself like a brand, and like you oh know, many times over, many many times over. So I don't know. Maybe I've, I've not found a groove as my brand or, or whatever because I. I I take, life keeps changing, man. Mm. Life keeps changing with every opportunity, with everything. I, I probably have done the biggest, meatiest, action-packed Hollywood role in a movie yeah. extraction. 
but that's not what uh, that's not what anybody talks about mm. right so you just live with it and move on and do something better are there still is there a is there a list of actors that you still want to collaborate with i have no interest in collaborating with actors <laughs> i have only or directors i only have a, 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 a thing to collaborate with directors so I, let's i have no interest in my co-actors as as collaborating with them because you are you are acting with the with the director's instructions as a director is there someone you want to really direct I like uh, Sandeep Reddy Vanga Vanga a lot. I like a uh, lot of other directors. Um, uh, I've collaborated with some great direct directors Imtiaz, Praval Raman, Sayyad Ahmed Afzal, Balwinder Janjua in recent past. And um, But is there an actor you would like to ever direct? Depends on which role it is. Okay. If that actor suits the role then why not? Okay. If I also start making you know a cast <laughs> casting actors because Nail. they are they are of a certain star stature, stature then mm. i would be defeating my entire purpose purpose and career uh, career a purpose to my career till now fair enough yeah fair enough yeah congratulations once again Thank like you. i said i think it was lovely to see um, the two of you so happy putting out your life out there and uh, you know i have friends who are from manipur and i feel like it was and It's just lovely that you all went there and showed that culture, um, and you all looked gorgeous. Tell me how that ex- that must have been. We only saw what we got to see, but uh, I, we were quite perplexed by how people got to see what we were going through at that moment because there was no internet there, <laughs> and uh, but I think and it was a very small ceremony. I felt that because shadi hamesha ladki ke ghar ja ke hi hoti hai, then I felt that it was my um, kartavya to go and. to my uh, wife's uh, mm. culture uh, so that she and her family feel the respect that you know and also coming from mainland to there it was a kind of a statement that uh, we chose to make and uh, manipur was going through some tough times mm. it was a real breath of fresh air and the importance of the cultural uh, aspect of uh, manipur and the maithi culture the vaishnav hindu mm. they are more practicing Hindus in the older sense in, mm. in ancient cultures than the mainland people are in fact, and to bring that to, that came out to four was was a was a real blessing and we got so much love and blessings from all across the world, all strata of society, and um, it, it was a real uh, blessed union I must say. It was lovely also to see the both of you really excited to go together. um you know as a couple to ayodhya she was wearing this lovely saree and i thought look she looked yeah beautiful. people no no people put point fingers and ask me you went to ram mandir or i said yeah people have asked you that yeah ore yaar are we going to ram he said yeah hamare haryana mein to bolte hi ram ram hai bhai so ram is a big not just a religious but a, but a cultural icon for us mm. not only is ram ram ji the God, he's also a cultural icon for us. He's he's a righteous man before Mr. Gandhi mm. was. So yeah, of course we we went for it with much pride, and it was a great occasion. Fully like that, you know, the Suhagan feel with the sun. <laughs> I thought she, it was fantastic. Yeah, she looked beautiful. She, she likes doing that. <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> But you. I'm happy for the two of you. I'm sure, Thank and you. your look, you all are like you all look like you all are best friends, and I know that. Uh, yes. which is the basis of any marriage and i think uh, we wish you all the luck for it thank you very much i'll end it by saying that uh, i'll give, let you have the last word because you're very good at well, it well though it seems like a history lesson <laughs> the movie is not preachy or 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 just a history lesson it is a very engaging thriller treatment of a movie which i've made for young people and um, it's got great dialogues and a sense of history unfolding in front of you but in a very engaging way no where am i preaching you lectures on 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 desh bhakti and and azadi you just see it fair enough thank you randeep it's been wonderful to chat with you we will already. now talk to you in 2027 fair enough <laughs> when you are when you coming for elections <laughs> i think this is a joke as well that's 2029 <laughs> thank you so much randeep for doing this and all the very best it's my pleasure it's always lovely talking to you rudrani thank you. and thank you for having me thank you so much cheers Thank <laughs> you.